Christmas, if you look at the Bible, the first Christmas did not end with the birth of Jesus. It just continued. Amen. The next thing that happened in the Bible is the Magi who came to visit Jesus from, from, the, from the east. So the Christmas continues. Amen. Can you turn to your neighbor and say Christmas continues? Yeah, the children said it louder because they know the joy of Christmas. I mean, let's turn to Matthew chapter 2. And I'm going to read through it. And if you can pay attention, the visit of the wise men. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men came from waste to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of Jews? For we saw a star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod then the, the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And, for you, and you, O Bethlehem in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For... From you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. When Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared, he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I may to come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went their way, and behold, the star that they had seen, when it rose, went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. Amen. Can we say it together? Great joy. Great joy. Amen. And now... Going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. And then, opening the treasures, they offered him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. Now when they had departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And he arose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was this was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet, Out of Egypt I call my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he has been tricked by the wise men, became furious. He sent and killed all the male children in Bethlehem, in all that region who were two years old or under, according to, that time, according to the time that he had ascertained from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah, a voice was heard in Rama, weeping and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be comforted because they are no more. When Herod died, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Rise, take the child and his mother, go to the land of Israel, for those who sought the child's life are dead. And he rose, took the child, his mother, and went to the land of Egypt. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judah in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there, and being warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee. And when he went and lived in a city called Nazareth, so that what was spoken by the prophets might be fulfilled, that he may be called, that he would be called in Nazarene. Can we pray? Father God, we thank you for this amazing chapter that has been lord given to us to realize your work among us lord i pray father as we go through this i pray the spirit of god will open our eyes to see it and receive from you the word that you have for us in jesus name we pray amen now this is a chapter I and mean, if you have if you have not read the bible this week this is a good time to read the bible amen <laughs> So this is a chapter that we find the story only in the book of Matthew, not in Mark, not in Luke, not in John. It has been written by Matthew, most probably on the 
hearing from Mary. Amen? Uh, Mary, and that's what we are thinking about. There is no other way. We don't know how he got this. But then definitely this is a very important chapter because if you see in the last verse that he says that he would be called a Nazarene. Like verses 23 he says, he went and lived in a city called Nazarene. Nazareth. So that what was spoken by the prophets might be fulfilled and would be called Nazarene. Jesus would be called Nazarene. Amen. That's the purpose of this whole story. This whole story was Matthew was trying to point out to everybody, especially to the Jewish community, hey, they, because the Jewish community would say, Jesus, if he is Jesus, if he is the Messiah, he should be born in Bethlehem. Because according to the prophet prophecy, he should be born in Bethlehem. So where, why is Jesus in Nazarene? Why is he called Nazarene? Amen. So Matthew takes them through the chapter. He shows them why did Jesus was called Nazarene. And if you say, it says like, it will be spoken by the prophets, might be fulfilled. And if you go back in the, in, the, in the previous prophecies, none of the prophecies mentions that Jesus will be called Nazarene. None of them says that. Then why did Matthew write that prophets? It is, the, we, 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 we understand it is like, Nazarene is a place that was not a very celebrated place. Amen. Bethlehem is not a very great city, but it is at least has a name. The name is house of bread. The meaning of Bethlehem is the house of bread. But Nazarene is not considered as an amazing city. It is actually considered as a city that is not very desirable. I mean, nobody want to be called Nazarene. Amen. Nobody want to, you know, certain names in your head that you know of. Like, you know, nobody want to associate with that name or that associate with that certain, oh, children. Okay, be, listen to the sermon today. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, we, we, we suffer with that because we want our children to grow. Amen. And we are okay with that. Amen. So nobody want to be called Nazarene. So what Matthew is writing is, the prophet said that he would suffer. And that is what Matthew is trying to bring in here from the understanding that some of us try to figure out that Matthew was saying why he was called Nazarene, because he had to suffer. Amen? Not because he was born in Nazareth. He was brought up in Nazareth, but he was not born in Nazarene. He was born in Bethlehem. But if you look at this story, the three characters from here, one of the main characters, the first one, is the wise men from east. Amen? So look at the wise men. They traveled all the way from wherever they were, carrying all these gifts and coming to Jerusalem. And one of the main guesses they had was, the only guess they had was, it was the king of Jews. So the king of Jews would be born in Jewish country. So they made all the way to Jewish country and they started looking for the king of Jews. And definitely, where would you look for a king? In the palace. Amen. So they walk into the palace, knock the doors of the palace and say, where is the king of Jews? We have come to worship him because we have seen the star. And the baby that is born is the king which is coming from heaven which is a certain, which is coming by prophecy. Amen? It is coming by prophecy. It's not an accident, but it is a, definitely when the King Herod and all, they hear that, they get scared because there is no baby born in the palace. Amen? No baby born in the palace, but then where is the baby? So definitely King Herod, and we know these rules and these dreams and the stories that has been in the past, that someone was born of a dream, someone, and he took over the country, he took over the thing, and he, that happened, whatever they feared about, it happened. So Herod was definitely paranoid, and he became panicky. As the scripture says, Herod and the whole of Jerusalem was paranoid. And they found out from the scriptures, if this is going to happen, where should it happen? And it found that it was in Bethlehem. So he tells them, okay, it is in Bethlehem. So go, find it out, search for him, look for him, and worship him and come back and tell me. 
So when they come out of the place, the word says, when they came out, it says, behold the star that they're seen when it rose before them. What happened? It appeared again. Amen. Now, this, sir, I, I, when I came here in 2020, I had spoken on the sermon, The Star of Bethlehem. There's a beautiful documentary that is on, the, uh, on YouTube. You can go and watch The Star of Bethlehem, made by a professor. Uh, maybe it's not a professor. It's a, uh, uh, I'm not, but not sure of that. But he made an amazing, beautiful uh, documentary on Star of Bethlehem. You should go and see it if you haven't seen it. It's not a Netflix, doc, Netflix documentary, so it will require your good attention to watch it properly. Uh, so, so sit down with a little more attention, maybe a coffee or something will help because I had to struggle through it because it's not very great lighting, but, but amazing documentary. If you look at that, it's wow. So it is, he says it could be, these people are from Babylon uh, and Daniel had passed on this information that there will be a king of Jews pass, uh, will be born. And they ascertain it with the stars. So when he found out, there is a software where you can go back and find out how, this, how does the stars and the positions work. And he found out over Babylon, there was a star that appeared. It was not a star. It was the Jupiter and Regulus and one more uh, star coming together in one position. And it looked like a special star. So it looked like a special star, and they felt it was. So it was, if it was today, we would not have agreed. We would say, no, it's not a star. It is something else because we know more details. Amen. Praise God. They didn't know that details that day. So they thought it was a star, and they walked around, and they walked to Jewish, come to worship him. And when they come back there, and the, the, the same man who made the documentary says, this position happened again. Amen. This position happened again over where? Over Judea. The same position that took place in Babylon took place again in Judea. Isn't it amazing that God orchestrates everything in such a way? Amen. See, remember this. You cannot just move things around in the space. Amen. It's not. It has to happen in a very amazingly, like, you know, it's beyond our thinking. I cannot explain it, uh, how it happens, but it is amazing. And he says, he's, when you look at the software, it happened again just before. And they say, when they came out of the palace, they saw the star. Amen? They saw the star again. For God to do it again in the same place that Jupiter and Regulus would come together with a bright shining in the star. It's amazing. So what it says that God orchestrates not just your life, but the whole universe. Yeah. Amen. The whole universe, he would orchestrate it. That's why the birth of Jesus is so amazing. It was not just planned on earth. It was planned in the whole universe. Amen. The whole universe is run by God. So today morning as we are worshipping, we are worshipping a God who has created Jupiter and also our own lives. Amen. Not just he created, but he also makes them run. Amen. Amen. If they say this, our sun, we can fit a thousand earth in this, in this sun. That's what I, if I'm not wrong. But they say you can fit the biggest star, you can fit a one million of the sun in the biggest star. Amen? So we are just a tiny speck in the whole universe. And that's our God. We worship an amazing, powerful, great, creative. There's no words enough, no words enough in our vocabulary to, to describe him, to worship him, to praise him because he is amazing. And when they saw it, it says like, and not just that, if you look at that, it says, this star moved. Amen. It says, when they saw it rose before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. Amen. So just imagine, these people are in a position and they see the star moving. And the star is not down, it is up in the sky, it is up in the universe, and it's up in the space and it's moving. Can you just imagine that? How God did it for them? 
and it says it came upon the house. Remember, they have to be in the, that same position so that when it comes and stops there, it should be exactly on top of the house. I mean, just imagine how God positioned, positioned it in the space and they are positioned in the earth and they're positioned in such a way the house has to be in that place. Amen. Everything has to fall in place for them to locate that house. Isn't that beautiful that God would create? I mean, church, how many times you have been through places and you have been through situations. I mean, job changes and all those things. Sometimes we think it's just accident. Sometimes it just happens. No, God positions everything. He works out so beautifully that you would be thrown out of wonder when you think about it. How did he do that? I mean, I can say, when I look in, back into my life, oh my God, the way God timed everything was beautiful. And that's exactly what happens. They saw the star come and stop in a place. And when they looked down, I believe on the horizon, they saw this house so far away from. They said, that's the house, just above that house. Amen. And said, so let's walk there. Let's go there. And it says, when they go there, going into the house now remember church now when they came here this is not a big palace it's a poor small house amen and they also say this is not the place where the crib was now by now jesus was a little grown up and he's in, in a house it's not in the manger but he is in a house and when they go there it's not a big grand house it's a small tiny poor house now think about it. When you come to a place and you were expecting something grand and grandeur and all the stuff, and but you know the Lord spoke, the Lord has said it, and you know all of it, but when you come there, the, your expectations are so different. Amen? You know this is what the Lord has said, but when you come there, you say, oh my God, this is not what I expected. I expected the palace, but I see a small hut. I expected something great, but I see something so small. Can God do that? Amen? Can God do that? Is this wonder hidden in small things, in things that you didn't expect? I mean, that's what on that day I, when I was speaking on 31st, I said, when Satan speaks, he may speak through someone that you don't suspect. But when God speaks, he will speak through someone that you didn't expect. Amen? You may not have expected that God would speak through that tiny voice or that thing that you never expected. But when he speaks, you know it is God because you receive the peace. Amen? It's not based on a five-star review. Amen? I mean, it's not. I mean, that's where... Most of devil's talks will come from. He's always coming with a five-star review. Because if he comes with one star, he will not accept it. Amen? But when God comes, there's no star needed. Because you know it is coming from God. Amen? It's not coming from ten different opinions. It is coming from one word. And that has come from above. Amen? And when they saw him, it says like, I mean, they didn't look at the hut. They didn't look at the, the things around. It says going into the house, they saw the child and they found out the child. And they said, wow, this child is exactly born on the time with Mary, his mother. And it says they fell down and worshipped him. Amen. Amen. What did they do? <laughs> they fell down. Now this wise men, I mean, remember they're wise men. I mean, they are not, they, if they are making a mistake, it would be foolish to do a mistake. Fell down and worship in front of an ordinary child, it would be a mistake. But they found that was not a mistake. Mm -hmm. Fell down, worshipped him, and then opening the treasures, they offered him gifts. Mm -hmm. Gold, frankincense, mirror. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Church, if you have been hearing voice of God... I want to tell you, no matter what you see, do not get confused with God's word. If you have received the peace from God's word, go for it. Amen. Go for it. Believe in it. Trust him because that's God. Amen. He orchestrates the universe. He has orchestrated your life. Amen. 
It may be a thing that you didn't expect, but believe him, trust God. And man, if we can trust humans so much, why not God a little more? Amen? Why not God a little more? More than men. And man, you trust everyone. Let's trust God more than men. Because he deserves it. He deserves it. He's worthy of it. And he is the only one who deserves that. The second person in this, in this picture we see is King Herod. Now King Herod, as soon as we see, as soon as he hears that message, he is paranoid. Mm-hmm. Amen? He's like afraid. And this is the character of Herod. Like, you know, if you look back into that, if you look back into the history of Herod, Herod was not Herod the Great. He was known as that. Now this title was not given to him. He made this title up for himself. He took it upon himself. He said, I will be known as Herod the Great. The coins were made with Herod the Great. He took it upon himself. And he wanted to be so great. He wanted people to know that he's so great. He started building huge buildings. So many huge buildings. And so many things he has built that like if you look at the place where the temptation of Jesus comes. Say, it says Satan took him to a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms. I mean what is he showing? He's showing all the things that he made Herod to build it. Amen. All the buildings that Herod had made. And says, all this will be yours. If you just worship me. Mm-hmm. Amen. So who was using Herod? Herod wanted to be the great guy. He made himself great. He built everything great. He wanted to be known as the great. And he did all these things. Mm-hmm. But he was so paranoid that he ended up killing his own sons. You know why? Because he was afraid that he will be killed by his sons. In fact, he killed one of his favorite wives. <laughs> Because he thought that she will also poison him. So he killed his own wife too. He was such a paranoid guy. Ultimately he dies. Amen? He dies. That is who Herod is. Trying to become great. Called himself great. Did everything so that he can be great. In fact, killing his own sons and wife. And then we have the third and the most important character, that is Jesus, King Jesus, who is born as a baby. Amen? Was born as a baby. Not into the highest high, but into a lowest of lows. Amen? Church, I know some of you have experienced lowest of lows in your life. Amen? Some of you have experienced... Places where you didn't want it to go. You have experience, experiences that you didn't want it. But remember church, even in the lowest of lows, Jesus is with you. Amen. That's what he was telling the whole world. Even in the lowest of lows, I will be with you. There is no place that I cannot be with you. Amen. Amen. There's no place on this earth. There's no experience in this earth that I won't be with you. I will be with you always. Amen. Always in your heights and in your lows. In your good times and in your bad times. And even in your ugly times. I will be with you. Amen. Jesus was, he, if, he had, if he could, he could have been born in, as Caesar's son. He could have been born as Herod's child. He could have been born in, as a chief priest's child. He could have been born as a scribe or any nice man's house. But he chose to be born in a poor carpenter's house. Amen. And with a poor small girl who was not very popular. Who just lived by herself. Amen. With her parents. Amen. Betrothed to be married. Amen. God was born. He chose that house to be born in a small place. And not just that, when he was born, he, it happened that he had to be born in a manger. Not a big golden chair, not a golden place. I mean, every parent, we desire that we could give our best to our children. Amen? The best crib. Who wants to give a manger to a child? But that's what Jesus chose. Amen? That's what Jesus chose because he wanted to be there. Remember church, this is orchestrated by Jesus himself because... As I said before, when Mary was holding Jesus, Jesus was holding the whole universe. 
He was orchestrating everything by himself. He made it possible. And that's where Jesus chose to be born. Now, why we should learn these characters? Why we should look at the stories? What is the reason for, we, for us to understand the stories behind that? Church, as Jesus taught in John chapter 4, verses 24, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. You know, God called us to worship him in truth and spirit. And again, in Luke chapter 1, it says, this is the angel talking to Zechariah about John the Baptist. He says, he will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to the fathers of the children and to the disobedient, the wisdom of just to make ready for the people, Lord, a people prepared. What he was saying is that John the Baptist will be born in the spirit and power of Elijah. What do you mean by that? I mean, we know Elijah was not afraid of Ahab. Amen? He went to King Ahab and said, Until I say there is no more rain coming, just take it. Amen? He was not afraid of losing his head. He was not afraid of nothing. He just went and set it on the face of the king. And exactly the same spirit that Elijah carried was upon John the Baptist. He went and preached the gospel with no fear. Amen? With no fear. He said, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent. And he told who? He told, he told the Pharisees, brood of children of snakes. He was, that's what he was calling the Pharisees, the greatest sect. He was not afraid of Herod. He said like he did sin. And you know what happened? He lost his head for that. He was in the spirit and power of Elijah. Now I want to remind you church, sometimes you must have heard this story. Like you know, sometimes you may think, okay, we, we heard this story. Like you know, the father went through that and nobody knew about it. But years later, the son went through the same thing. Have you heard stories like this? You have heard stories like, oh, this family, they have a habit of committing suicide. The father did and the son did and the grandson. It's just like, it's look like it's there in the family. You must have heard that, you know, the father did the same mistake, the child did the same mistake, and it's passing on. Have you heard the stories like this? Mm -hmm. Amen. How did it happen? Amen. We know even two twins are different. Amen. God made us all so unique that we have our own characteristic. But how could the same habit and practice be passed on from generation to generation? It is not that human behavior. It is not written. It is the spirits that conquer them. Amen. There are spirits on this earth that passed on from generation. Remember church, when we die, we go away from there. But the spirits that live on this earth are still there. Amen. The spirits that live on this earth are still there. I mean, sometimes when we repeat, I mean, that's why they say history repeats itself. How? It's not the humans who do it. There are spirits that dominate people. The spirits that still live and try to do the same mistake. And here the word of God says, the spirit and the power of Elijah will come back through John the Baptist. Now church, when we read about the stories, what we are going to look into is that, that we will not get under these spirits. Amen? Amen? When we look into the scripture, always look into that, God, I don't want to submit to this spirit anymore. That's why we have the scriptures. That's why we have the word of God. That's why we have testimonies where we saw, when we speak of goodness of God, deliverance of God. Amen. And how do you do that? In Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 to 18, Paul writes, But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh, and both are opposed to each other. Amen. Amen. Both are opposed to each other. You know, when Jesus was on earth, he said, I will send you a... Holy Spirit. Amen. And that spirit will set you free. Amen. That spirit will set you free from all the bondages. 
I mean, word of God says there is a generational curse that passed on from generation to generation. Word of God says the spirit that Jesus gives will set you free from the generational curse. Amen. It must have happened in the family. It doesn't have to happen in your life if you let the Holy Spirit live in your life. It doesn't have to happen again. Amen. It doesn't have to happen again. We know the wise men. The wise men were led by a star. And when they looked above and they found the star and they just walked with it. I don't know. I know for one thing for sure you have received your word. And today church, I want to ask you that you walk by the word that you received. Don't go by the opinions and things of this earth. Because if you lead your life by the opinions and things of this earth, there is spirits that are trying to capture your mind. There are spirits that are trying to take over your life. And those spirits are one thing to repeat the same failures that has happened in the earth before. Amen. Amen. The same failures that has been done in the past to repeat it once again through yours and my life. But there is a word that God has given. And when the wise men, when they saw that the, cha the situation changed from a palace to a hut, they still stuck to the word. Amen. Amen. They stuck to the word. They didn't go back to Herod. They didn't go back to the palace. Or they didn't go back and say, maybe we made a mistake. No, this is God's word and I believe in it. I trust it. And today I'm here to worship him. And no matter what, I will worship my Lord. I didn't, ex I didn't get what I wanted, but I have received the word and I'm going with the word. I'm not going to change my opinion based on what I see because that's why we are called to live by. We are not called to live by sight, but we are called to live by faith. Amen. Amen. By faith and not by sight. You know, because the sight that whatever you see will try to change your opinion. Change your opinion about God, change your opinion about the word, change your opinion about the situation, change your opinion about everything. But remember today, you have received the word and I'm not changing my opinion because I received it from God. Amen. Hallelujah. I do not walk by sight, but I walk by faith. That's how God has called me. That's how God has called me even when I see him, but when I find him, I will worship him. They were led by a star. King Herod was led by flesh, greed, and pride, and fear. Remember church, this is exactly what the word of God says. We are not called to live by whatever we see on this earth. I mean church, we have seen kings reigning. We have seen circumstances where people have done things in the past. And remember those spirits are longing to take control of your life they're longing to take control of your life and you know what they do when we read about them I mean church let me tell you when you read about this great man in the newspaper or maybe like you know isn't there a desire that is born oh I also want to do that I also want to become like that remember church these are seeds that Satan throw into our lives because if they, you know, everyone on this earth can make money. Everyone on this earth can do great things. But if they were led by the evil spirit, if the word of God says, broad is the way that leads to destruction and the many on it. There are many on it. There are people who have made great things on this earth. People who have achieved success on this earth. They are all on the broad way. And the devil is trying to put the seed into our lives. Remember when you watch a movie and you see a heroic act, don't we feel like, yeah, I also want to become like that. <laughs> and then Satan tries to put the seed into us. Because remember church, you are uniquely and beautifully made and God has a plan and purpose for your life. And then his plan and purpose for you is not a carbon copy of someone else. No. It's not another substitute plan of someone else. No, it is uniquely, beautifully made for you and you will live it. Amen. 
And remember church, no matter, I mean, I'm not saying all this are bad, no. But remember what the spirit leads us. Which spirit is leading us? King Herod was led by pride, greed and flesh. But Jesus led by example. He led by power and he led by, it says, he's the way. Jesus said, I am the way. Amen. I am the way. Nobody comes to the Father but through me. Church, if there is a way that you can live your life on earth, it is Jesus. Amen. It is Jesus. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, Paul writes, For God gave us a spirit not of, no, it's not of fear, but of power, love, and self-discipline. Church, today we received a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. Why are we surrendering ourselves to fear today morning? Why are we looking around and feeling like, Oh God, what did I miss out? You have not missed out anything if you have the Spirit of God inside of you. You have the power that you have to live on this earth. You have the love that God wants you to use to transform you. Change your surroundings. Can we close our eyes, church? Can we look to the Lord today and surrender ourselves at the feet of God? Just like the wise men led by a star. They came and when they saw Jesus in the small hut, it says, they fell down. Fell down at his feet. And they worshipped him. I, are, we, are we thinking, God, if I get a five star review, then I will fall down at your feet. Are we saying that or are we saying, God... I've seen your word, I've read your word, I know this is you, I worship you. And I don't need another opinion. I don't need another person to tell me what to do. Because when I see God, I know it. When God calls me, I know it. When God has spoken, I know it and I receive it. It may be a humbling experience, but I receive it. It may not be the way I expected, but I receive it. 2024, as we wait on the Lord, may the Lord bless you to soar on wings like eagles. Mm, oh, come, let us 